Congratulations on the purchase of your Ultra Whole House Well Filter System Combo. Your system will work in four stages. First, water will enter the well water filter, which will eliminate iron, sulfur, and manganese from your well water. The carbon filter will then eliminate contaminants. Next, the sediment filter will eliminate any particulate. Then, the water will enter the softening tank, which will neutralize any remaining particulate. This video will walk you through the installation process. The system will consist of the following parts. The well water tank, which will also be labeled as tank 1. The carbon filter tank, which will also be labeled as tank 2. A softening tank that has the head pre-attached. 50 feet of drain line. The head for the carbon filter tank. The sediment filter housing. A sediment filter a spanner wrench, six MNPT fittings, two red and one blue bypass valves, an electronic head for the well water filter, a power supply for the electronic head, a gasket and lube, a mounting bracket, and a hose clamp. Your system is compatible with PVC, copper, and PEX tubing. The installation in this video will feature a combination of PVC and corrugated water connectors. 48 hours prior to the installation, the media in the tanks will need to be activated. And as was just mentioned, tank number one is the well water filter tank. This tank does not require the media to be activated. The carbon filter tank, which is listed as tank number two, and the softening tank that comes shipped with the head pre-attached will both require the media to be activated following these steps. The goal is to fill both tanks with water. The carbon filter tank is shipped without a head on it. It will need to be placed. The future soft tank has the head pre-attached. Since the carbon filter tank needs the head installed, let's go ahead and begin by performing that step. Begin by unscrewing the cap that's on the top of the tank. It can be discarded as it is no longer required. Locate the tank head that comes shipped in a smaller box. There is an opening on the bottom of the tank head that will align with the pipe that's found inside of the tank. Align them and then press the tank head in place. Press down on the tank head while simultaneously threading it. Begin by hand tightening the head. Once the head is hand tightened, you will need to fully seat it in place. To give you leverage, you can insert the head of a screwdriver into one of the openings. To help hold the tank in place, you can place your feet around the boot at the bottom of the tank. With the right amount of leverage, you can now fully tighten the tank head onto the top of the tank. Please note that once a tank head has been screwed onto the tank, under no circumstance should you unscrew it or you will risk damaging your system. This may also cause the carbon media to seep into your plumbing. The provided bypass valve will now be installed. There are extenders with rubber fittings that will be pressed into the openings on the tank head. Thread the two connectors onto the head and fully tighten them to secure the bypass valve in position. You will now install the MNPT fittings. Insert the rubberized fitting into the opening on the bypass valve and then tighten it in place. Repeat this on the other side of the bypass. The hose bib adapter will now be required to soak the media inside the tank. Locate the inlet side on the carbon filter tank and then fully tighten the hose bib adapter to that connection. A garden hose that's connected to your spigot will then be connected to the hose bib adapter. Before turning on the water, ensure that the bypass is not activated. The valves on the top of the tank should be positioned as shown here. Turn on the water to the hose about halfway. Once water begins to exit the tank, the water can be turned off. Shut off the water to the hose. The valves on the tank head will now be set to bypass. The hose can now be disconnected. The future soft tank will also need to be soaked. Begin by attaching the bypass valve followed by installing the MNPT fittings. Repeat the same steps as a carbon filter tank to fill the tank with water. 
Once both tanks have been filled with water, remove the hose bib adapter and store it in a safe location. At this point, both tanks look the same, but you'll find a CF printed on the carbon filter tank and an FS printed on the future soft tank. Store both tanks for 48 hours to allow the water to soak into the media. After the 48 hours has elapsed, the media inside both tanks will need to be flushed. Begin by installing the hose bib adapter and the hose to the inlet side of the carbon filter tank. Go ahead and turn off the bypass to the tank. You will also notice water escaping from the other valve. Turn on the water to the hose and allow it to run for a few minutes until it begins to run clear. After a few minutes, go ahead and shut off the water. Disconnect the hose and the hose bib adapter. Reconnect the hose bib adapter to the outflow side of the tank and then connect the garden hose. Turn on the water to the hose and allow it to run for a few minutes. The hose and the hose bib adapter can now be removed. Connect the hose bib adapter and the hose to the future soft tank and repeat the steps to flush the media in that tank. The neoprene covers that came with your tanks can now be placed. There is a Velcro strap to hold it together to allow you to catch the zipper. Slide the cover downwards as you zip the zipper. The cover will be pulled over the boot at the bottom of the tank. Repeat this process with both tanks. The well water filter, which is tank 1, will now be prepared. Begin by unscrewing the cap at the top of the tank. The blue cap on the pipe inside the tank will also need to be removed. Both caps can be discarded. There is a small circular opening on the bottom of the electronic head that will align with the pipe that's inside of the tank. Once aligned, go ahead and set the electronic head onto the pipe. You will need to apply downward pressure to get the threads to catch. Thread the electronic head clockwise and continue turning it until it's fully tightened. The tank will now be rotated to gain access to the connections on the back side of the head. The bypass valve with the blue levers will now be attached. It has rubberized fittings that will fit into the connections on the tank head. Press the bypass valve in the position and then fully tighten both of the connectors to seat it in position. The MNPT fittings will now be connected to the other side of the bypass. They have a rubberized connector that will insert into the opening and a fastener that will also need to be fully tightened. Repeat this with both of the MNPT fittings. Apply plumber's tape to the threads on the other end of the fittings. Apply plumber's tape to the connections on the carbon filter and the softening tanks as well. With the tanks prepared, you will now proceed to preparing the sediment filter. Unscrew the top of the tank to remove it. Inside, you will find the gasket and the lube that's required for the next step. There is a groove indented along the top of the housing that will receive the gasket. Go ahead and lay the gasket in place. Apply some of the provided lubricant along the edge of the gasket and then spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The gasket will then be flipped over and reseated into the groove. Apply the remainder of the lubricant and once again spread it out to ensure that it's evenly coated. The provided sediment filter will now be installed. The sediment filter has an opening that will rest on a nipple that's on the inside of the sediment filter housing. Drop the sediment filter into the housing and then make sure that it sits flush. It should sit just below the surface. The lid of the housing has guides that will ensure that the sediment filter properly aligns when you put it back on. Go ahead and replace the lid and fully tighten it onto the sediment filter housing. PVC nipples will now be installed on the in and the outlet on the top of the housing. To ensure that there are no leaks, plumber's tape will need to be applied to the threads on the PVC nipples before you install them. Thread the PVC nipple in place and fully tighten by hand as tight as possible. Repeat these steps on the opposite side. A pipe wrench or a pair of pliers will now be required to fully tighten the PVC nipples into the housing. 
The final step in prepping the sediment filter housing is to apply plumber's tape to the other ends of both PVC nipples. The sediment filter will now be mounted using the provided bracket. Due to its weight, you will want to mount to a stud and also note that a level is beneficial during this step. It's important to remember that the well water filter and the carbon filter will both be placed ahead of the sediment filter. Once you identify the mounting position, go ahead and mark the holes to be pre-drilled. A cordless drill with a 3 16 drill bit can be used to perform this step. The mounting bracket can then be placed using four bolts and four of the provided washers. A ratchet with a half inch socket can be used to perform this step. Before mounting the sediment filter housing, identify the inlet and the outlet to ensure that you're orienting it correctly. The inlet side should be facing towards the same direction as the incoming water supply for the preplumb. Go ahead and mount it using four of the provided bolts. If you haven't done so already, you will need to tap into your preplumb. Please be sure to shut off the water to the home before performing these steps. Also note that it's a recommendation to install a bypass ahead of the system to allow for easy maintenance. Expose your preplumb and then install the 1 inch threaded adapters onto each of the sides. Identify the side of the preplumb with the water that's leading into the home and prep the threads with plumber's tape. The recommended PVC shutoff valve will then be threaded onto that connection. To ensure that there are no leaks, you will need to fully tighten the PVC shutoff valve in place. Prep the threads of a third PVC nipple and you will then thread it onto the other side of the PVC shutoff valve. Fully tighten the nipple by hand and then you will need a wrench or a pair of pliers to fully tighten it in place. The well water filter will be installed first and should be positioned next to the preplumb. A corrugated water connector will now be threaded onto the incoming water supply that you prepared. Fully tighten the connection by hand and then ensure that it's fully tightened. To identify the in and outflow sides of the well water filter, arrows are printed onto the connections. Bend the corrugated water connector towards the inflow side on the back of the well water filter. Connect the water connector and then thread by hand. Use a wrench or pliers to fully tighten the connection. Before proceeding with any other connections, we will install the drain line into the well water filter. It is located on the left side of the head. To simplify the installation, the cover to the tank head can be removed. Grip the underside of the tank head on the rear and the front of the tank and pull outwards to release it. The cover can then be slid up and removed. The elbow for the drain will need to be removed to make the step easier. It is secured in place with a blue locking tab. Go ahead and remove the tab. The elbow will then slip out. Take the hose clamp and slide it over the provided drain line. Press the barbed end of the valve onto the drain line and push it all the way in until it's fully seated. Position the hose clamp over the connection and begin to tighten it. Before fully tightening it, make sure that it's aligned as shown here to avoid it getting in the way when you reconnect the valve. Reattach the valve with the connected drain line and be sure that it pushes in all the way. The blue lock tab will now be reinstalled onto the back of the valve to hold it in place. Run the drain line towards the drain and then trim away the excess. But you should be sure to leave yourself a little slack. If you drill two pairs of small holes towards the top of the drain, you can use zip ties to secure the drain line. Thread the zip ties through the openings and then push them in to create a loop inside of the drain. The drain line will then be threaded through those loops. Tighten up the zip ties to secure the drain line and then trim away the excess. Please ensure that there are no kinks or pinches on the drain line to avoid any issues with drainage. With the drain line installed, we will now resume the installation of the well water fixture. Connect a corrugated water connector to the outflow connection on the back of the tank. Ensure that the connection is fully tightened. We are ready to install the carbon filter tank and recall that it has CF printed on the head. Position the carbon filter tank next to the well water filter with the connections facing backwards. Take a moment to identify the in and out of each tank 
and make note that they're opposite from one another. The carbon filter tank and the FutureSoft tank will also have inlet and outlet printed on either side. The corrugated connector from the outlet from the well water filter will now be maneuvered to the inlet on the carbon filter tank and connected. Be sure that you fully tighten it. Connect the water connector to the outlet side of the carbon filter tank, tighten by hand, and then fully tighten it. The other end of that water connector will be maneuvered towards the inlet on the sediment filter housing, connected, and then fully tightened. The future soft softening tank will now be positioned on the other side of the sediment filter with the connections facing back. Connect a water connector to the outlet on the sediment filter housing and fully tighten it. Bend the other end of the connector towards the input on the future soft tank and then thread the connection. Then you will ensure that it is fully tightened. A final water connector will be connected to the outlet side of the future soft tank and then fully tightened. Prep the other end of the pre-plumb with plumber's tape. This is the side that's leading back into the home. The other end of the corrugated water connector leading out from the future soft tank will be connected to it and then fully tightened. At this point, all of the plumbing connections are complete, but there's a few final steps to take place prior to testing. You will need to power the electronic head by adding the provided adapter. It will plug into the power port that's on the far left on the underside of the electronic head. Plug the adapter into a power port that is not controlled by a switch. It is also recommended to connect a 9 volt battery to the electronic head to save your settings in the event of a power fault. Once the 9 volt battery is connected, it will be stored in the tray just beneath the display. A final important step prior to restoring water to the home is to use the provided spanner wrench to fully tighten the sediment filter housing. The mounting bracket for the sediment filter housing has an opening that will be used to store the spanner wrench. You are now ready to test the system. While the water is still turned off to the home, turn on the cold water all the way in one of the bathtubs. The shutoff valve to the system and the bypass valves to the tank should all be in the off position. This will make it easier to test the shutoff valve and all of the connections to ensure that there are no leaks. With the system bypassed, go ahead and turn on the water to the home. With the shutoff valve in the off position, it will prevent water from flowing through the system but will give you a chance to check it for any leaks. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and open the shutoff valve allowing water to flow through the connections. Water will also begin flowing into the home. Work your way across systematically, checking the tank connections for any leaks. Proceed to checking the sediment filter housing for any leaks. If you notice any water leaks around the base of the housing, use a spanner wrench to fully tighten it. Continue by checking the future soft tank connections and also the connection leading into the pre-plumb. If no leaks are detected, go ahead and turn off the bypass allowing water to flow through the well water filter. The bypass to the carbon filter tank can also be opened, allowing it to flood with water. As the tank is pressurized, you will need to peel back the jacket and inspect the collar for any water leaks. If any are detected, there will be a step at the end of this video on how to solve it. The bypass for the future soft tank can also be opened up, allowing it to fill with water. The cold water to the tub will remain open and allow the water to flush through the system for 10 minutes. Also note that it's normal to see a small amount of sediment during this process. The settings for the electronic head can be programmed using a smartphone. Search for Legacy View in the App Store. Once found, go ahead and install the application. Once installed, go ahead and open the app. The application would then begin scanning for the head. It's called Aeration Filter. Go ahead and select it. To set the time on the unit, go ahead and tap on that tile. A prompt will ask you if you want to set it to the same time as your device. 
go ahead and select OK. The regeneration time listed on the right hand column will also need to be updated. It is recommended to select a time when nobody is using the water in the home. To change the time, simply tap on that tile. A prompt will come up to allow you to change the time. In most circumstances, 2 a.m. should work perfectly. The filter backwash frequency on the lower right hand column will need to be updated. Go ahead and tap on that tile. On the screen that comes up, you will select 5 days. Then select OK. For the next settings, select the menu icon in the top left corner. Select the advanced settings option. The error charge frequency in the upper left hand side should be set to one day. If not, go ahead and select it. Go ahead and set it to one day and then select OK. On the right column, the backwash time should be set to 10 minutes. If necessary, update it and then select OK. On the left column, the option that says rest should be set to zero. If not, go ahead and correct that field. Air draw on the right hand side should be set to 20 minutes. If not, select it and update it. On the bottom left column, rapid rinse should be set to 5 minutes. If not, go ahead and update it. Your system can now be regenerated. Hit the menu icon in the upper left hand corner. Please note that the water regeneration will take about 45 minutes. During this time, you will not be able to use water to your home. Once you're ready, go ahead and select Regenerate Now from the menu. Confirm the regeneration and it will run for about 45 minutes. If you see water seeping from around the tank head on the carbon filter tank, it's an indication that the tank head is not tight enough or that the O-ring on the inside has become bunched. To solve the issue, you will need to loosen the tank head just enough to get a small gap between the tank head and the top of the tank. Do not loosen the head any further than this or you will run risk of damaging your system. That type of damage could also cause resin to exit the tank and into your plumbing. Once you have a small gap on the tank head, you can go ahead and re-tighten it into position. Reconnect the tank to the system and run the test to check for leaks. Congratulations! The installation is now complete.